So, I am joined by Steve, the man himself, Hello. the manager for trains. And uh, we are going to be taking a look at the British Rail Class 40 40145, uh, which comes with scenarios for London Bedford, as it says on the top of the screen there. Steve, 40145. One specific loco. What's unique about 40145? Well, 4015 is quite special in itself, is because it was the first Class 40 to ever be preserved. Right. So, I uh, don't know if many people know about uh, 40145, uh, well, I'll get my words out, <laughs> is that um, originally it was, um, it used to work out of Neville Hill Depot, uh, but then had uh, quite a different career transferring between York and Gateshead and then back to York and then back to Gateshead. So like they couldn't make up their mind which depot it was going to go to. <laughs> and then unfortunately uh, ended up suffering quite a catastrophic derailment and caused significant damage in 1983, uh, which ultimately led to her withdrawal. However, um, it wasn't going to be the end of her life and Ultimately, she was then transferred into preservation and was actually the first of the, the class um, joining her uh, and later joined by her sister local as uh, 4135 or D335. Yep. So quite iconic that these both these locals ended up in hands of the Class 40 Preservation Society uh, as uh, D345 and D335. Yep. And uh, obviously there are only three preserved class 40s uh, actually in existence to this day. All the rest were scrapped. So that's like you know, all 197 of them yeah. uh, were scrapped. Um, and D200 um, actually sits in the NRM in York. Yeah. So this one's particularly special. And you know I'm really excited to see this actually come to steam because this one was actually the, the turning point for the class 40s. And actually, if uh, 40145 hadn't made preservation, it would have probably none of them would have ever made oh, that would preservation. Have been unacceptable. It would. It would. <laughs> that would have been it would really lost something. Because uh, they're a beautiful local, aren't they? I mean, they're so big and powerful. They are. They are. Um, you know, um, a few years ago, I got the pleasure to sit behind um, 40105 controls and managed to power her out of York. Uh, all the way to Scarborough and back and um, you know they're quite iconic machines uh, the sound that they produce is just so distinctive that you just can't help but fall in love as soon as you move that power handle that throttle handle back that's it, it just blows your mind yeah you know yeah, of course the 40s have got the nickname Whistler which is all about that sound isn't it oh yeah very so very much so if you ever look at the turbochargers on a 40 they are absolutely enormous, about twice the size of my head. <laughs> so you'll probably fit your head in the, in the tube as well. <laughs> <laughs> and still have room to spare. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, they have really quite a distinctive sound. And uh, I've had a long, long love affair with uh, Class 40s for, uh, for a lot of years. That's amazing. So it's in preservation right now, isn't it? It is. Um, which um, and we've been working with the Class Forty Preservation Society, I believe. Uh, yeah. Well, the uh, we've worked really hard to try and and get um, final permission from the Class Forty Preservation Society to officially license this um, locomotive. It wasn't enough for us to uh, to bring the uh, Class Forty um, kindly provided by uh, all the effort put behind by Alex Riley of Railride uh, and the, the folks of Armstrong Powerhouse and Wagons and so on. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't enough for us to just bring this 40 to, um, to steam. We had to have a proper official license for this and Class 40 Preservation Society were very kindly able to give us full permission for a fully licensed version. That's fantastic. That's really, really good. Now, from what I remember, the 40 is, is probably one of the most complex machines in the game. Now, people have seen me drive. They know how I handle complex machines. Where's my ex is there, can I use my Xbox controller? <laughs> well, I mean, people say that the Class 40 is quite a complex machine. I, I would disagree with that. In, okay. You know, compared with some, you know, um, we've just had a look at Hamburg-Lubeck and, you know, something like the ICE-TD, 
which is actually, if you think about how you interface with that, that machine, it is very, very complicated, mm -hmm. just thinking about the safety systems. Certainly, yeah. When you think about class 40, the safety systems and, and what have you, it's a very simplistic machine with some very basic controls. I think what really differentiates this is the care and attention to detail to the realism uh, of the locomotive. So when I think when we, we talk about this being an advanced locomotive, we're talking about the care, the effort that's gone into reproducing a, a high fidelity simulation okay. that reproduces the the characteristics of this locomotive. Yeah. You know, as it as it as it was when it ran over the metals yep. uh, back in the day. So yeah, I mean the uh, the developers really really worked hard to uh, to reproduce this version. But you know, you, there are special f things in there that you wouldn't necessarily find in any of our other DLT. So to compensate for that, and obviously there's a lot of our customers who love to drive engines from the comfort of their armchair with an Xbox controller uh, uh, on the big screen and uh, you know the developers work to implement that with a very basic I'm saying basic a slightly bit, less shiny <laughs> a, I, was, I would say a, a reduced control set yep. to allow people to really get the the um, the full enjoyment of the local yeah okay that's really good. So, if it's going on Steam, does that mean I can upload scenarios for Steam Workshop for this? Of course thing? you can. Oh. Of course you can. I mean, for awesome. me, that that in, in itself is a huge plus because yeah. you know I've I've thoroughly enjoyed the uh, Class Forty, which we all know is available elsewhere. Mm. But the the downside actually for that pack is that you know we don't get to use Steam Workshop. Mm. Yes. You know, and share all these scenarios, and uh, I've written quite a few scenarios for the Class Forty. They just, you know, can't wait to get up there and uh, and share out with people. Yeah. So you know, and this really does does help us um, get those scenarios out there. And actually, I'm I'm more excited about what our community is going to do with it. Oh, so am I. I mean, some of the stuff we see. I mean, there's twelve thousand items on Steam Workshop today. Twelve thousand. That's 12, a lot. Twelve thousand items on Steam. That's amazing. I mean, just full credit to everybody out there. I mean. The number of scenarios I play from Steam Workshop, I play a lot of scenarios from Steam Workshop. The quality is amazing. Yeah. We I mean, put put this loco in some of those, and just I'm, I'm excited. Mm. This is looking good. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see what what our community do with this, and uh, you know, and, and bring in some some authentic scenarios to uh, to Steam Workshop for, for for many of the other routes. And the thing about this, uh, particularly loco, is that it's. You know, it's, it's valid on quite a lot of UK routes because it's a, a modern day spec mm -hmm. local. Um, I mean, it's so this one's a little bit different to the other version because it's got the modern systems in there that you would find in the in the real Class 40 that so runs the rails today. AWS and yeah, so it's got the uh, the modern AWS and all the other safety systems you would find in there. And you know, I mean, it's it's not uncommon to see class forty um, or four or one four five um, on the rails these days as yep. operating rail tours. So you know, it's it's more more quite appropriate to a lot of our modern routes that we've got, and, and actually, it's just as appropriate to some of the more historic. Yep. Because you 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 know, the the thing about this uh, pack is it's not just got the um, the. 4 or 145 in the large logo livery, which you know the class 40 kind of missed out on on, on adopting when they introduced it uh, back in what was I think it was 1985 86 I think uh, to the class 37 and the class 40 was ultimately meant to be in that livery, but they were withdrawn just beforehand. Right. So and uh, so this pack features both the 4015 in the large logo and it's all over corporate blue okay. livery so which is what most people would be more familiar with yes yeah you know let's take a look at the uh, the next slide then just so that we can actually show maybe you can you can talk us through this is the this is uh, the b this is the, the regular br blue one isn't it? this is d345 it is yeah yeah it is so um, this is quite a big and the, the characteristic of this particular engine is the center head cord um, and there were two versions of this, one with a domino, two dots on the front, 
and this version, which is the, it's got the, uh, still got the blinds in the back. Right. And usually quite, it carries quite distinctive head chords and instantly recognisable. 4Z, 4Z is usually the most common one, and then you've got 1Z, 45, which is obviously 40145. Uh, yep. You know, so the, yeah, it does carry some quite common um, head chords there. Superb. And obviously, the um, another big characteristic of this is the uh, the head plate. Yes, on, I was just thinking actually, it's got the um, the C40PS head plate on it. Hasn't That's it? right, it does. Yeah. So uh, obviously, it's officially licensed. Yeah. You know, obviously, we know this is a, um, an English electric uh, low core engine low core. You know, and uh, it does put out quite a bit of horsepower. Yes. You know, so and it's, uh, it's quite unique with the one uh, three. Three one bogies, right? You know, it's it's effectively a four wheel bogie. Yes, yes. Uh, or a four axle, loose, and say. then there are a three wheel powered on each one as well. So um, obviously, for axle loading and what have you, the uh, the longer wheelbase um, allows for much more much more power to be delivered at the rail, uh, and obviously spreads the weight of the local, um, you know, more evenly across mm -hmm. the track. Um, and the lead dolly wheels there would just allows the uh, low core to traverse tighter curves than it would normally be able to. Obviously, with such a long bogey, it's, uh, it can be quite challenging to get around some tight curves, particularly in Imagine yards. Imagine squealing a bit. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, the whole of the lower end is effectively articulated, and obviously, um, with a lot of British law cores, the buffers tend to be mounted to the body, yeah. whereas this is actually mounted to the uh, bogey frame, so okay. it makes it quite distinctive. Yes. So, scenarios, we talked about workshop scenarios, what scenarios actually come in the pack? So the uh, Class 40 comes with eight scenarios, so effectively uh, it's featuring both versions of the livery uh, of 40145 and D345 as, it, as it's known in the All Over Blue. Uh, and there are effectively four scenarios for the advanced version of the local. So that's basically the unadulterated simulation, full control scheme. But you um, might not be able to use the hard or Xbox controller on that's that. Right. That's a keyboard experience. Indeed, indeed. Or um, directly operating the controls. That's right, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can use, still use the hood, but you know, if you want the full hardcore experience, then the yeah. advanced version's for you. However, you're not going to miss out if you just want to use the Xbox controller and you, you, you know, or you, you, you're not totally familiar with the low core yet and you just want to, um, to it drive it. Yeah, then there is a, a hood version there as well that you can work And all the same scenarios are available on the HUD as they are. So you're not missing yeah. out on gameplay if you just want to drive it in a more simple way. They are, yes, definitely. And obviously once people get hold of this and uh, we've got um, people creating scenarios for it for, for workshop, then there'll be infinitely more yeah, more scenarios that. there for people. And I'm certainly going to be uploading mine as well, mm, so absolutely. look out for those. Okay, well, we're going to play the first 15 minutes or so of one of those scenarios, yep. aren't we? And um, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll maybe talk a bit more about the loco as we're driving along, and you can tell us about what all the, what you know what we're seeing as we're driving. Yep. Okay. Well. Right. So let me put the game sound back on. I would, but it's gone away. That's brilliant. Hang on a second, folks. <clears throat> this could be interesting. Uh, the option to put the sound back on has gone away. Never works when you want it to. It doesn't, does it? <laughs> it's just not my day. Right, okay. Um, so it should be coming out of there. It's not. Right, I think what we might need to do is just restart the game yep. and uh, see if that brings it back. I've not really had a proper look at this uh, this class forty, so I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love it. Uh, um, every time I actually sit in front of a PC, it's the first. It's my go-to local. Yeah. You know, the first one I look at. 
you know, I, I get so much enjoyment out of driving into it. And it, it kind of takes me back to that day of, of at the controls of four or one or one or five. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm only slightly jealous. Yeah, well, there aren't that many people who, uh, as a youngster, get to uh, sit at the controls. Of a, of a full main of anything mainline locomotive. <laughs> well, of any any loco, in fact. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that sets you up for that. Right. In that case, let's uh, kick that off, and we'll switch to that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Steve can take over. Steve's driving. I'm not allowed to drive this one. I don't know why. And uh, so, yeah, this is the Thames Clyde Express part one, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. So a number of multi-part scenarios. So, uh, you know, it gives you a bit of a, a, f a fuller experience, I think. Yeah. You know, the thing I really like about the scenarios is they're, they're quite detailed. So. Particularly in the traffic, which is really what you want. You want detailed AI traffic and, and what have you. Yes. Uh, so I've seen a couple of questions on there about the giveaways. Um, we will get in touch with you via Twitch after the uh, after the stream, um, and uh, you'll uh, we'll, we'll get uh, we'll let you know what we do. Oh my word! That's uh, rather splendid. So you can just hear a throttling on up there. We'll get the doors open, get the passengers loading, and then we'll jump into the cab and do some quick setup. So first things first, let's get the uh, the lighting sorted out, and then we'll move the uh, the reverser into engine only. So we've always got already got the driver key in, so you can pull that in and out. And you you'll find that if you want need to swap end, you will need to remove the key before you can get into the other end of the cab. So it's quite uh, important that you remember that the driver key is quite an important thing. So we can hear now that the air compressors come on and uh, it's now bringing the, uh, the air brake system up to, up to spec. And we'll turn on the AWS system and we'll hear the AWS go off. And as you can see here, that it's quite a different AWS sound as well. It's a more modern buzzer yeah. rather than the, the old bell and horn that you used to have. Yeah. So there's not much else we can do now at the moment. So we'll uh, we may as well drop to the outside. So you can see it's slightly different in terms of the layout as well, all the, yeah, uh, all the modern. NRN and TPWS. That's correct, yeah. So there's been some quite different some differences made, and we've obviously got um, all the usual features as well, which is the the um, refillable boiler and uh, and what have you. The interesting thing about um, 40 uh, 145 is it had a refit. It was refitted with the uh, Clayton boiler, so it's a slightly different layout in uh, a slightly different spec, if you like. Yes, I think I was reading about that. It was the group at ELR that did that, wasn't it? One That's of the, right. One of the old group organisations there. This snooker spends a lot of time with these things, doesn't it? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Soldier cases. Did the Preservation Society change the AWS bell? It didn't have an AWS bell, did it? Uh, yeah, it would have had uh, a bell and a horn originally. Um, but what they did is they... Uh, or to get the mainline certification, then they would, they would have had to have updated it. Right. So the horns were notoriously prone to failure, so hence why it was changed to a, a buzzer. Right. And you'll find that with a lot of preserved stuff is they're moving more to the buzzers because yes. the horns are more prone to failure. Okay. The thing, the interesting thing about 4 or 145 is as well as the air system um, in this in this particular loco is has direct influence over the entire. Uh, loco. So, for example, as you're um, revving the loco, it will affect the speed of the wipers, for instance. 
um, then obviously it would affect in in the real loco it would actually affect the the sound that you get from the AWS horn. Right. Okay. So the doors are now shut. Let's jump back into the cab. We've got the all clear. So just customary before we set off. Get the horn on. Nice. <laughs> and get the power on. So not too much to start off with, so just be very careful about this. What we don't want to do is overload the traction motors. This flash over is simulated in this. Right, okay. You just need to be a little bit careful. No, you can't just whoop it up to full power. So you can see we're very, getting very close to overload there, but you know. We are at about three quarter throttle there. So just back off as we come out. I think we're on a 15 limit and then it does increase to a 20. So we're on the middle and main line to uh, St Pancras to Bedford, aren't we? That's correct, yeah. So we're just coming out of St Pancras. So it's pretty, it would have been, uh, this would have been its old stomping ground really in terms of, uh, you know, back in uh, early 70s, they were all allocated LMS region so quite appropriate that she comes back here The, I think this is a cement works tank. Yes. Uh, just as we come past the cement works, there will uh, increase to 20. Just manage the, the throttle. So for me, uh, being at the, the helm of these controls, these are the two main controls that I'm more, most interested in. One's the speed, and the middle one, which is the ammeter, so I know how much currents that we're putting into the traction motors. And then obviously we've got our brake gauges down the bottom here. So just as we approach the tunnel here, we'll uh, have the all clear up to 50. We'll do this in stages, we won't go straight up to, to 50. So we'll give the engines a chance to throttle up, see where the am eater is, and then uh, we'll increase the power. Blow the horn just to make sure there's no one in the tunnel. There we go, up to full. You should hear a throttle up now and whistle that, a classic whistling sound. Advanced caution. It's obviously somebody running ahead. Very careful as it as it switches over the field diverter that we're not overloading here. What happens if you do? Effectively, what will happen is you shunt far too much power down the traction motors, and you'll get you'll get flash over, yeah. which is effectively causes the uh, the 
feel to effectively melt the wires in the tracking board. Cause a terminal. Yeah, it's catastrophic damage. <laughs> cost it change it takes to replace a traction motor, it's not something you really want. I'm just going to back off a bit just as we uh, approach the tunnel here. Turn the horn, just come through, and as you've got the clear up to 80 there, just wait until we get through the other side of the tunnels see what the signals are doing. It's quite a heavy train this as well, we've got about uh, 11 or 12 on the back. caution up ahead. So we will need to think about braking. I'm just going to bring the brakes on a little bit. Just slow us down. Just in case we need to stop at the next signal. It's always nice approaching a really good tunnel. It is. It just makes the sound of the engine just sound that so much that, that, that bit sweeter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the effect. Change there. <laughs> 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 Who sat there thinking I was going to spad? <laughs> we'll need to worry about that on the next signal. Yeah, I'm sure the one ahead has uh, got a yeah, bit of a beam. Oops, took the handle a little bit farther. Good job those 319s don't uh, accelerate quite uh, quite quickly. So we'll just hold our speed at this. We should be alright in the next signal. <laughs> We'll just hold the speed at 30 for a little bit, and then uh, yeah, as we pass the signal, we'll, uh, we'll bring the speed up again. Again, we're waiting for the engine to rev up. Let's see where we are in the army there, and then straight up forward. Here then turbo charges. So the full thing uh, on this obviously don't forget we've got opening windows both sides. We've got opening cab doors. Well, we don't want to do that while we're driving. On both sides.
light on. There it is. And as soon as we've got a clear signal ahead, we're under the limit. We can even affect the frost guards on the uh, on the radiator there. Uh, if you leave them closed for too long, you will get really, really hot and cause you some serious problems. Um, use the page up and page down. suited to this as well, um, uh, four or, uh, one or four or five is usually calling either a full set of maroons or a full set of chocolate creams. So. So yeah, some slight different details over the original, I mean obviously we've still got the brake selector, we've still got the boiler filling system and the brick swimmer here and the traction water isolation system so Designed to do a maximum 90 miles an hour, but best of luck getting that with a heavy load and 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 uh, a heavy gradient through the grade against you. In climbing hills, you'll struggle to get up the hills. Uh, I mean, it's probably more suited to freight. So that's probably where she ended up in her life uh, just before uh, she was privatised. But uh, still managed to do it for 80, 85 miles an hour. Get to go downhill, it probably go past 90. Although I wouldn't recommend it. They do indeed. We have a couple of more as well. And if you turn them off in a funny place, they'll stay there until you press it again. And as I said, um, the wipers speed will act is actually influenced by the engine torque as well, so the output the engine give you Putting down full throttle like we are here, and 
the wine fish will work really, really well. So, for the new uh, style at the beginning, and you haven't got that much air, they uh, are a little bit sluggish. Route pretty well, so that's why I don't need the hood. <laughs> well, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, they were all allocated in this region anyway. But so I'm, I'm not sure if there was if that was the reason why they decided to the bed for is most appropriate. But uh, it certainly suits her anyway. So. And as you said earlier on, being in one so fits in. Well it does, yeah, you can run it on ECML, uh, West Coast Mainline, no problem. In fact if you've got any modern route she'd probably be appropriate to it, so it doesn't matter which one it is. Whether well, it's English, Scottish, or Welsh. Southern section of the uh, middle of the mainline, mostly to uh, Midlands and North Northern Main. Some did end up finding their way down parcel services were usually most common for. Well, the road. 
everyone super fast. Break zone, it starts slowing down for the uh, stop ahead. So we're going to be doing a giveaway for a couple of days. Kind of started breaking two miles out, and it's, uh, <coughs> that's the variable nature of this. Sometimes she says <laughs> that. So I think we have your first one, don't we? On yeah, we Steve's <laughs> first Nebworth. Never mind. Oh, I stopped in the right place. Yeah, flew past it. Hi. <laughs> But that's just, this, is, this is a heavy loco, it, it's, it's simulating the real thing. You have to really um, be on the ball and... Uh, I was expecting, actually, I was expecting that signal to uh, be at caution, so it would warn me a bit sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Gosh, oh, it means I can oh, stop. I love the detail of the wheels there. It means we can get in and stop and admire her from, you know, out here. That's four miles to stop. Yeah. There we go. We can stop and admire her from here. So and look at the detail. Some tremendous detail on the bodies there. I like the, the white marks on the wheels as well. Is. Incredible how it's there. So I think uh, if you're looking for giveaways. No. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Shall we give a couple away? So let me find the. Um, Giveaway says, Oh, it's still working. Win. Well, hey. Win. Uh, so, first keyword then. Uh, let's go with D345. So, so D little D. 
three four five. So little d three four five. Uh, type it in no hyphens, no capital letters, no capital numbers either if you're attempted, and um, just the four characters. That'll enter you into the uh, giveaway. We have two of these. If you don't win this one, then uh, you have another opportunity. Uh, this is for the uh, Class 40 40145 pack, which isn't available on Steam yet, um, and uh, you will be uh, the winners will be uh, contacted and then you'll receive your prize once the pack is released on Steam. Those that won the Hamburg Lubeck pack will be getting in touch with you uh, in the next, um, sometime next week, uh, and we'll get your uh, prizes to you via the Twitch messaging. So uh, keep an eye on your Twitch messaging, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get codes over to you, along with instructions on what to do. That'll be sometime next week. Right, I think. It's, uh, do, you want, do you want to do the honours, Steve? What's that? Press the roll button. All right. Best of luck, everyone. Bob, Robert M K. Congratulations, uh, Bob. Let's uh, make note of your details. And it's time for another keyword. Um, well, it's got to be Whistler. Whistler. Whistler's the nickname for this loco. It's all lowercase letters. Uh, W-H-I-S-T-L-E-R. Whistler. So you type that all into the, uh, into the chat. I'll enter you in, as usual. And uh, in a few moments, we'll, we'll pick a winner. Well, we'll get the computer to pick a winner. <laughs> All we do is press the button. Yeah, I think people really, really, really want to win this, don't they? They do. <laughs> they do. Quite rightly so. Too right, yeah. <laughs> Another, uh, another 10 seconds and then we'll, uh, we'll draw. Okay then Steve, if you'd like to do the honours. So best of luck everyone. Manspotter99. What an intriguing username. <laughs> Congratulations, you are the second winner. Right, so, um, just to recap then, uh, we did the Hamburg Lübeck uh, and uh, we did the, uh, some giveaways on that. So triple, uh, triple pack was Rob Allen 55. And two copies of The Root were LM26061 and Grey Brad. And then the Class 40, um, Robert MK and Manspotter99. So congratulations to everyone that, uh, everyone that won. Um, the Class 40 is coming soon. Keep an eye on it is. Engine Driver and Facebook, um, and uh, you'll get details about uh, when that one comes out. Hamburg Lübeck is already out, yep. and uh, of course, um, there's that sale for Germans uh, content as well. There is, there is. So you can save about 40% off some select add ons to celebrate the launch of Hamburg Lübeck. Yeah, so that's Hamburg Hanover, Munich Rosenheim, BR86 steam engine, the BR120 electric loco. The VR266, um, um, basically like a car 66 in the UK, and the VR261 uh, Voith Graviter um, shunting loco. So uh, that's all on Steam. Uh, you can you get that right now, along with the Hamburg Lübeck and the, uh, the various packs for that. And uh, I think we're just about done for this now. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you very much for um, stopping by and, uh, and watching us this evening. hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the content we've shown. If you've got any feedback, do feed it back via Engine Driver, Facebook and so forth, and uh, we'll take that on board for future shows. Um, we will, if you keep an eye on Facebook and so forth, for the, uh, for the next one that we're going to be, uh, the next show, and uh, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as possible when that one's going to be. We look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. And we'll see you later. Thanks bye. a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.